Thanks, Cole. Uh, Justin, congrats on a great start to the series. Uh, could you elaborate on why Cameron Green was told uh, not to bowl on the final day of the Adelaide Test match? Steve Smith said maybe it was for some uh, management of the young lad. I certainly wasn't told not to bowl. We just, as a the young guy uh, who did extremely well, he to bowl three days back to back um, as part of fast bowling management. It seemed to make sense, but we're thankful. He's we always had him up our sleeve, and he came back beautifully. So. Um, it's just when a young player like him, who's got enormous um, talent and potential uh, and has had the injuries he's had, you've got to manage him really well. So it was simple as that, really. Andrew Menzel. Hi, Justin. Uh, just wondering um, what the thinking was behind bringing um, Scott Boland into the squad. Maybe I'll come back to... Uh, he, uh, after uh, the test match, we had a five-day test match. We were got to make sure or we'll wait and see how Josh Hazelwood pulls up. Um, he arrives to this afternoon into the squad. And then also how Michael Nisa and Jai Richardson pull up and Mitchell Stark as well. So it's more precautionary than anything else. That said, he's a terrific bowler and he's, he's had an awesome domestic couple of years. So if he gets the opportunity, like Michael Nice the last game, he will certainly deserve that. Thank you. Scott Bailey. Yeah, g'day, Justin. I know it's all sort of up in the air because you don't know how fit everyone is and isn't, but if Josh isn't right to go, but the other guys are, is Joe Richardson your next in line now or is that sort of still undecided? Yeah, undecided at this stage. Uh, both did a great job, both Michael and Jai did a great job in the last test match. Uh, so we'll just w wait and see how they pull up. We've got back-to-back. -back. It's a tough series. We all know that. Uh, five test matches pretty much in a row. So we'll just manage our bowlers as best we can and we'll put our best, or our fittest and uh, most ready to perform out on the park in Melbourne for their Boxing Day test match. Dean Wilson. Yeah, hi. Good morning, Justin. Um, you've tried various different methods throughout your coaching career and have enjoyed success at, at different times. I just wanted to take you back to 2019, the aftermath of Headingley, um, when you got the team round and, and showed them the video of what kind of went wrong the day before. We understand that England have gone through a sort of similar process, maybe quite quickly after their defeat in Adelaide, where players were made to watch uh, some of their mistakes. I just wondered, did you get the response you wanted after that? Was that a, a useful tool uh, as part of the coaching armory or would you, on reflection, maybe not go through that again? Well, we won the next test match in Old Trafford and retained the Ashes. So that's one way to look at it. The outcome, the process was tough at the time, but I, th yeah, I think on reflection, um, we'll do it again. I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but at the time it seemed the right thing to do and it got the, it seemed to get the right effect. Is that because the, what, why, why the hesitation on not sure to do it again? Is that just because of the reaction to it, the relationships that, uh, that happened after that? I mean, what, what's the hesitation there? Oh, it was the, night, the day after the test match. You, you, what you do as a coach is you work things out at the time and, yeah, I probably would do it again. Who knows? Who knows? Hopefully we don't get another situation where you have a incredible innings uh, like Ben Stokes played that game when it was, you know, we'd dominate or we'd, we're ahead for most of the game and uh, hopefully we don't get that. We might. And then you react to that situation when it comes. Thank you. Rory Dollard. Thanks. Hi, Justin. Uh, Marnus has, has overtaken Joe Root at the top of the... Uh the top of the batting rankings, do you, you know, number one, uh, pleased for him, but also does that tell you, you that you're doing a good job of uh, stopping Joe going big? Because really England, England win matches when Joe Root gets big hundreds and you haven't let him do that so far. Yeah, he's a brilliant player, no doubt about that. And we spend a lot of our time working out how to uh, get on top of Joe, not only because he's a such a world-class player, but he's also the captain of the opposition. So it's always been a philosophy in the Australian cricket team to put as much pressure on the opposition as captain as possible. Uh, Joe Root's that tough though. And he, you know, we see he hasn't necessarily got a really big hundred yet, but he's been the 
been an excellent player this series already. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll continue to do our homework on him and make sure that, or hope that we can um, keep having good effect with him. Mel Farrell. You there, Mel? Sorry. Yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, hey, Justin. Um, just um, Obviously, Travis Head has had a, a really good series uh, so far as well. And I'm just wondering if you think that one of the key differences between the sides has been, I guess, the, the faith that the batters have in the ability of the others to score runs. So, in a way, giving them a little bit more freedom? Oh, maybe. I'll go back to, I think Rory just asked a question about Joe Root. What I know about Test cricket is you've got to have six or seven people performing, not just putting all your attention on one. So, you know, it's great to see so many of our guys contributing. We talk about partnerships in our batting. We've had a couple of really big partnerships. We're ticking all our, what we call our whiteboard um, marks off in terms of batting. And, and Travis has been a big part of that. I've got enormous amount of respect for the way he's come into this series. He was left out last summer and then to keep fighting back and but also to play with the um the courage he's got has been awesome for the team so uh yeah he's been when you've got david warner playing well steve smith playing well Marnus playing well um and travis head playing well you know we've got cameron green and marcus harris who are, haven't quite made the runs yet but geez they're looking good so um so yeah it's a contribution from all of our guys and thankfully they're all doing that at the moment David Mark. Thanks, Kyle. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, look, I wanted to touch on Marcus Harris. What's your feeling about the way he's playing? Will he play in this test? And what would be a pass mark for him to maintain his spot in the team? Well, he'll play in the test. No, no worries about it. this. is his home ground. He's played a lot at the MCG. Uh, he hasn't made the runs he'd like to so far, but he, he dominates domestic cricket. So he, know, the, he knows how to play. He's a fantastic bloke around the squad. He's got a good sense of humour. He brings something, um, good energy to the team. And we know he's a very good player. So we're, you know, for him and for us, we're hoping he makes a good, uh, plays well and gets a good partnership with Davey Warner uh, in this Boxing Day Test match. Is there a pass mark? Is there something he would have to do? Is, could he have another failure and play on in the series? Yeah, I mean, we look at it all the time, don't we? Yeah, we'd like to back our players in where we can. And uh, as I said, we know how good an opening batsman he is in domestic cricket. Um, he's showed glimpses of it in test cricket so far. And we're hopeful that he'll, you know, keep kicking on and keep getting better. It's a tough, tough gig test cricket opening the batting. So he's not far off, I don't think. Sam Landsberger. G'day, Justin. Congratulations on the World Cup and, and the start to the Ashes series. Just wondering sort of if um, it's revitalised you in a way. Have you, have you sort of thought about whether you know you really want to continue in this post in, in the real long term? If uh, yeah, has what sort of happened in the last few months? You know, had a change or, or uh, an impact on sort of what you, what your long term plans are in this team? I've never thought differently. To be honest, I've been consistent with what I've said for that for the last four years. You know, I love my job, uh, and the boys are playing well. No doubt about it. It's a great team to be involved in. Um, so, yeah, nothing's changed from my point of view. Is that all three forms? Just to clarify, yeah, would you like to obviously um, continue steering the ship in, in all forms of the game? Yes. Thank you. Andrew Wood. Yeah, good night, Justin. Um, I want to ask you about Marnus um, getting to the number one uh, test batting rankings. And if you could cast your mind back, I suppose, probably about three years now when you, when you picked him at a time when a lot of people were probably thinking, oh, what are the selectors doing? But, I mean, his performances since have probably um, justified that. Can, can you sort of t tell me, I suppose, what was it about Marnus that um, that he was doing that you were seeing um, that made you pick him? Oh, he had a, he's had. he got an incredible appetite for cricket. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. He loves practising. He loves batting. He's as fit as any athlete in Australia. And he's just a terrific bloke to have around the team. I also knew he had a very good batting coach in Neil DeCosta, who's worked with Michael Clark and Phil Hughes in the past. Uh, and they're all the ingredients. You know that people who have got that, that energy and, um, and love for the game, who have got no doubt got some natural talent. That you, well, you, you like to take a punt on them. And 
he just he astounds us every time. We watched him bat it when I watched him bat at the Gabba. Yeah, England went really hard at him, but the way he played, he stayed calm, uh, and he's just continues to get better and better. So, and I've got absolutely no reason to believe he won't keep getting better and better. He's a he's certainly as hungry as ever. He's working as hard as ever, and uh, let's hope he continues on this incredible rise. Yeah, his batting coach said a couple of years back he reckons uh, it's Neil DeCosta reckons he could get I think maybe 25, 30 Test centuries. He's up to two thousand runs now. I think six or seven Test hundreds. Where, how high do you think he can end up in the uh, when he finishes? Yeah, time will tell. It's a it's a tough business, but all he can keep doing and is keep doing what he's doing, preparing well, and uh, the outcome usually looks after itself. And if he pl keeps playing for a long time and he keeps looking after himself like he does, plays for a long time, then the runs will look after themselves, I'm sure. Thanks, Justin. Yeah, good morning, Justin. Can you tell us, I guess, keeping in mind your comments before about Marcus Harris playing on Boxing Day, what's your messaging at the moment um, uh, for Usman Khawaja and... Do you think he's likely to perhaps have a role to play later on in the Ashes? Well, time will tell. The reason Aussie came in is one is very adaptable player. He can play in all positions. Uh, he can. He's opened in the past. He can. He can bat in the middle order. So, as I say with all our guys, I've said it for four years. He's got to stay ready. You never know when the opportunity is going to come. Stay ready. Stay ready. Stay ready. And Aussie's so experienced. He's a calm head. He's fantastic around the group. Uh, the boys love having him around the squad. So uh, he's got to stay ready like all the players. There's plenty of talent in Australian cricket. We can only pick 11 at a time, unfortunately. Um, but it's nice to have some real depth and some talent you know, knocking on the doors. So that'll be the message to Uzi, and he gets it. Mitch Cleary. Uh, Justin, just on uh, Mitch Stark specifically, firstly, how's his back? And then secondly, has there been a consideration to rest him given his World Cup workload and then bowling 27 overs in the second innings in Adelaide? Yeah, it's one of the reasons someone asked me about um, Scotty Boland before. Uh, it's nice to have this, I guess, nursery of, of bowlers who we know that can perform in test cricket. And I, th I honestly thought Mitch Stark was almost the man of the match last game. I think his consistency, been a lot of talk about Mitch Stark for the last few years, but he just keeps turning up. He's, a, he's an unbelievable athlete. He's incredibly fit. Again, he's another one who's much loved around the team. And he's an unbeliever. His um, resilience to just keep coming up over and over and over again is, is remarkable, really. And his consistency of length and the way he controlled the, the tempo of the game last game was a great credit to him, uh, particularly with Paddy and Josh Hazelwood not playing. He became the leader of the group. He did a fantastic job. So I'd, I'd be very surprised if he doesn't get up for Boxing Day Test match. Has his back required much work? Oh, it's just his rib, actually. He's just, um, and it's just, uh, I've never been a fast bowler, but a lot of the um, bowlers talk about when they come back to Test cricket, bowl more overs, they jam down on that rib area. So he should be fine. He's, he's tough. He is that tough. Um, and if, but if he's not right, then we'll look at it. But at this stage, uh, there's no indication suggesting he won't be playing the next Test match. Russell Gould. G'day, Justin. Just on that Mitch's resilience there, I mean, it was a fairly tumultuous lead into the start of the series for you guys. You come off the back of a winning World Cup and then you lose your captain and all that sort of stuff. The bowlers had not played much red ball cricket. Have you been surprised at the ability of the guys to just turn it on so quickly into go 2 nil up in the series. And obviously in Adelaide, you lose Pat Cummins as well. I mean, the performances have been, have, I'm sure they've met your expectations, but have you been surprised in what you've seen from the guys to be able to come through what they came through and perform so well? No, not surprised. We, we talk about staying calm. What I, I loved about even, I think I found out at midnight the other night about Paddy Cummins um, and what was happening. So I just really like how we've got, how everyone's staying calm, getting on with their job. We know our processes. Everyone know their, knows their roles in the team, whether it's the all the players, they're, they're clear on their roles, whether it's the selectors or the coaches, everyone's clear on their roles. So everyone, therefore, can stay calm. And even through uh, the quarantine period in um, the Gold Coast, we had excellent facilities. Everyone stayed nice and calm, got on with what we had to do, and it was nice to start the series as strongly as we have.
you've been with the group a while now. Have you seen significant growth in a lot of the players as well over that time to get to that point where they can be so calm through so much tumult? Yeah, absolutely. And then when you bring guys in like Travis Head comes back in, he's a, you know, he's a senior pro now. Uh, Alex Carey comes in on the back of what happened with Tim. Uh, we bring Michael Nisa in and he's played a lot of cricket now. He's an old pro. So, you know, it's brilliant to have these guys who have been waiting, waiting and wanting to get in the Australian cricket team. They'll do anything to play that to play for the Australian team. So um, they take their opportunities. They love being a part of the, the group. It's a great environment to be around and uh, they're stepping up nicely for us. Thank you. Drew Jones. G'day, JL. Um, just, just one on COVID. Have you noticed since getting to Victoria, I, I guess with the rising cases and whatnot, have you noticed much of a change in terms of the rules around the team and given what happened with Paddy and then I guess um, Melbourne known for its food culture, but you probably won't be able to check out the restaurants while you're here? Yeah, we're aware of it, mate. No doubt about that. And we're, we see it from, um, we've been living this life for some time now. And I think guys have just used some common sense. They, they We've seen if the Australian cricket captains ruled out from a close contact, I think, and talking about what we've been talking about for the last 20 minutes or so, um, there's only 11 spots and all the boys want to be a part of those 11 spots. So, and a Boxing Day test at, against England in an Ashes series. Uh, I think they'll be using their common sense. It's a shame because, but hopefully one day we'll get back to what we call inverted commas, normal living. But at the moment we're, we're doing, you know, we're doing our best to, as I said, stay calm, enjoy the, experiences we've got and, and live within the current climate. And just a really quick one on, on Josh Hazelwood. If he wasn't right to go in the test, would there be any consideration to be letting him stay in New South Wales and having Christmas with the family? Yeah, he he actually chose to come to Melbourne. So he because he'd been, um, he'd organised to, he, he thought he was going to be here. So he'd organised his Christmas around being in Melbourne with his with his girlfriend, Sharina. I think she's got some family in Melbourne. So uh, that's why some of the guys went back to Sydney. They're, every opportunity they get to be home, it's like a day at home is like a week's holiday, really. So they spend so much time. But it was Josh's preference to come to Melbourne. And uh, we obviously honour that preference. He's one of our um, senior players. And, um, yeah, we're looking forward to seeing him this afternoon. Thanks. Scott Bailey. AJ, hey, I'm just interested from your experience, mate, as a player, as someone who obviously uh, was made out like their spot was under pressure a fair bit. In in the last couple of days, obviously, your public support of Marcus this morning, Travis Head said it after day four in Adelaide, C. Smith after day five. How important do you think that is? You know, because I know it was something you spoke about a lot as far as what Steve Wall did for you when your spot was talked about. Oh, it's very important. It's nice to know people have got your back. That's that's absolutely probably one of the most important things in life, actually, knowing people have got your back. Um, and I, you know, when my, my experience, if that's what you're asking, when Steve Waugh or Ricky Ponting um, or Mark Taylor, Alan Border said you're in the team, you feel like, you know, you feel like Superman. And I, and I said that a few months ago, but you, you feel like you're important to the team. And, and Marcus Harris is important to the team. He's an opening batter. He's an out-and-out opening batsman. Um, it's something that we've talked publicly about and privately about, about really cementing, not just for the short term, for the long term, our opening partnership. I think it's very, very important. We, um, we've chopped and changed a lot over the last five or six years, and that's testimony to that is how many opening partners Davey Warner's had in his career. So uh, certainly one of the building blocks of a great team is the opening partnership in the top three, uh, and we're determined to get that right. Roger Vaughan. I think you might be on mute, Roger. Uh, we'll go to Sam Landsberger while we're waiting for Roger. Uh, Justin, just uh, there was a question off the top about Cameron Green. I'm just wondering, are, are there some specific numbers about him? Is, uh, is, there a X, is there a set number of overs he can bowl per innings or, or no? No, there's not. Uh, there seems to be a lot. I, I'm surprised there's been a lot being made of Cameron Green. I thought his what we saw with his bowling was that exciting last test match. I mean, I've, I've watched him since I think he was 17 or 18 play, but he's had a couple of stress fractures in his back. He's only 22 years old. And if you look at the research on 
young fast bowlers, you got to look after them. But there's certainly no numbers. Um, we we'll, we'll just manage him through it. Just use common sense and and care and um, for our players as much as we possibly can. So. Uh, we thought we were in a position. England fought valiantly the other day on that last day. I thought Josh Butler played really well, uh, went deeper than we were hoping. Uh, and because of that, we still had, as I said, we had him up our sleeve to bowl. He did a great job for us. So, um, yeah, I wouldn't be making too much of that, except the fact that we're managing and caring for our players, especially our young players, as much as we can. And, and just lastly, I mean, obviously a, a result in Melbourne will retain the Ashes for you, but there's a well-tested a, a play as well, which sort of, you know, does that increase the appeal of, say, a 5 nil result, the fact that you can really, you know, get get the points on the board for that? Oh, the Test Championship's really important for us, yeah. We're, we, were, we were envious of New Zealand and India that we weren't there last year. Uh, we would have loved to have been. It was, had been a goal that we, we didn't achieve, unfortunately, but... Um, so, yeah, every test match is important. We, we know we're entertaining a lot of people around Australia. I can't believe how many messages I get from people all around saying, you know, how much they're enjoying the test series, how much they enjoyed the World Cup in this period of COVID there. You know, it's great for us to be out on the park. So there's that side of it. But there's also the winning a test match. You know, I, I hear a lot about um, what could happen in this series, but I also know how quickly things can turn around. So we're just going to concentrate on doing as well as we can in this Boxing Day test match and then we'll think about Sydney and Hobart after that. We'll try Roger again. You there this time, Roger? Yeah, can you hear me now? Yeah, we've got you, mate. Thank you very much, Cole. Thanks, Justin. Look, just tag teaming on what Scotty was asking you, Justin, about Marcus. Just, you know, you talk about your own experiences as an opening batsman sort of setting aside your role as national coach. Do you do you sort of use that? Do you do you guys sort of talk as fellow, you know, I guess fellow members of the opening batsman cartel, and sort of can that help him? Do you think? Yeah, I've known I've known Marcus since he's about fourteen or fifteen years old. So, uh, and you know, we both both happen to be left hand opening batsmen. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's our job as coaches or mentors to help these young guys. Uh, find their feet firstly and then prosper in, in international cricket. It's a tough gig. There's no doubt about that. So, But we're really confident Marcus has got what it takes to, to be a successful Australian opening batsman. Um, and what, what we see in the nets, what we see in domestic cricket, all adds up to what, sh what is potentially a very good test career. So let's hope he starts that off again on, uh, on Boxing Day. Last one here, folks. Izzy Westbury. Hi, Justin. Just finish, um, following up from Sam's question, England have never come back from 2-0 down. They'd have to break all manner of records to do so. So uh, as the opposition team, what, what, do your, what does your focus then turn to? Is it just one match at a time or are you thinking about the series as a whole um, and that 5-0 kind of in the prospect? We haven't talked about anything like that. We, we obviously... We've focused, and, we've, and I've said this publicly, we, after a World Cup and an Ashes, there's two sort of missions, if you like. The, with the World Cup, we, we did it one game at a time there. We were able to get accomplish that result, and we're doing the same here. We'll just, you know, as I just said, I know how quickly Test cricket can turn around. I know how quickly this things can change, and everyone in the squad knows that and respects that. We respect Test cricket's tough. We respect England. have got a number of very, very good players in their team um, and it changes quickly. So we'll, the, the, the mission, if you like, was to win the Ashes in Australia. Uh, we've won two test matches. We've got one to go. And uh, hopefully from our point of view, that happens this test match. Thanks, guys. Thanks to JL for joining us this morning. We'll finish it up there, guys, and uh, we'll catch all you uh, guys tomorrow. Cheers. Thanks. Thanks, Justin.